So I'm going to uh, show you what uh, it's like uh, to actually witness a WannaCry infection and uh, really how the ransomware will uh, go about its, its work of uh, encrypting a user's files. And you probably would have seen a number of screenshots of this um, on Twitter and in the media, but let's actually have a look at it live. So uh, this is a virtual machine running in a completely isolated environment. So it has no network connections. Um, and so this uh, test environment allows me to investigate and test various forms of ransomware to uh, you know, understand how they work and to make sure that we have um, specific ways of being able to protect and recover from them. So in this little test environment, um, I've got a number of documents and these are just test documents. It's, it's not real live data, but this represents um, potentially a user's files, their business data and, and the data that they're using and working with on their system. You might be noticed I'm actually running Windows 10. Um, regardless of the operating system of Windows, the, the attack works in exactly the same way. The only difference is the way that actually gets onto the system. So uh, this particular server potentially would have been uh, a bit better protected against this kind of attack because Microsoft already had included uh, changes to the way that this bug and this vulnerability was used in Windows 10. But nevertheless, what we're going to focus on here is what the actual attack looks like. This is the WannaCry payload. It's an executable file. It's uh, just over three megabytes in size. And so this is an, an exe. And this is the file that was then delivered onto a user system by the eternal, uh, eternal blue tool um, and then given execution privileges um, by you know, the other NSA tools used as part of the overall attack. Um, in a lot of ransomware attacks, you know, they try and entice the user into running this payload. For WannaCry, users did not have to actually click and run anything because it, it already had execution privileges. But I typically expect a, a ransomware payload to have a name something like this. So a spreadsheet, uh, perhaps with a name like this. And so this might have been received as an email attachment you know, and trying to entice the user to think, oh, you know, what was the boss paid last year? You know, what did my colleague's bonus, or what was my colleague's bonus like this month and so on? So typically there's some element of social engineering used to try and trick um, users into running the payload. Now, obviously, for, for WannaCry, they didn't, uh, the uh, attackers didn't actually need to use this type of social engineering because they already had a, a way of actually getting their payload onto a Victor's machine and running it. But you know, this is the executable, and you know, if I was a user, I was tricked into actually running and trying to open this spreadsheet. An educated user is going to notice that that is not actually uh, the icon for a spreadsheet. That's the icon for an executable. However, if they're running it from an, an email attachment or a browser download, it may not necessarily have that exact same icon. And obviously, there are plenty of ways to, to spoof and fool um, an icon as well. So that's not necessarily a guaranteed way of knowing that what you're opening is actually um, what you think it is. But in the case of, of WannaCrypt and WannaCry, um, it, you know, the payload was already delivered and then was given execution privileges. So let's go ahead and run it. Um, it's now ins installing itself on the system. Um, and once it's finished installing itself on the system, this normally takes a few seconds, it'll then go and start encrypting files. And you can see it's already started this process. So it's now encrypting all of my files and data. When it's finished encrypting it, it'll then remove the originals. Um, you'll notice it's already changed my desktop background. And once it's finished encrypting all of the files on the system, it will then display its ransomware message um, and demand ransom. So you can see how quickly this attack propagates. Already it has encrypted all of the files on my system. Um, it's now scanning the rest of my file system and it's now going to start out to scan out the rest of the network, um, you know, creating those random IP addresses and pinging out on them trying to cross infect. Now that it's finished infecting all of my files, it's now ready to demand its ransom. This type of ransomware message is, is fairly typical for these types of attacks. So we can see this is the wanna decryptor tool. This is actually the tool they provide for you to get your files back. And the instructions they give you and uh, uh, help you to you know, pay them in Bitcoin, they've helpfully translated this into a number of languages. And so regardless of where they were potentially getting this attack and landing this attack, um, they're able to provide a little bit of user support to help their victims pay them money. Um, here we can see the timer um, showing how long we've got left before the, the, the ransom is doubled from $300 to $600. And we can also see a timer showing us exactly when that uh, ransom, that, that, that global ransomware encryption key is going to be deleted and all of our files will be permanently um, inaccessible. So again, you've probably seen screenshots, screenshots of this. Uh, you've probably seen this uh, in the news in the media. But 
that really is all there is to it. It's now up to me as a user to try and decide what I'm going to do. So what are your options if you suffer a ransomware attack? Well, option number one is to pay the ransom. There are a number of problems with this, however. You know, the moment you pay the ransom, um, you're expecting a criminal to stay true to their word. And you know, the, as glamorous as Hollywood might make things like Ocean's Eleven look, um, you know, expecting a criminal to stand by their word and, and actually give you their data back um, is, uh, you know, sometimes we have seen in some cases, criminals have returned data. And in the particular instance of WannaCry, um, most users have been actually receiving their decryption keys to actually get their data back. But previous studies have shown that in some cases, um, only 25% of victims who actually pay the ransom actually get their files back. If you look at the, uh, the overall kind of policies of a number of gov governments, you know, they refuse to negotiate with terrorists and criminals. Um, and uh, for the exact reason that you know, it sets a precedence. And the moment any victim pays a ransom, they are potentially identifying themselves as a future mark for other attacks. Simply paying the ransom uh, will allow you to unlock your files, but it doesn't necessarily remove the ransomware from your system. And given that your system has been compromised with you know, the, the various bugs and backdoors have now been installed, um, we could potentially pay the ransom, get our files back, and then a week later, the criminals could reinfect us given that they are still inside of our system. So simply paying the ransom um, might potentially be considered by some a last resort, but generally it's, it's not recommended to pay the ransom because even if you do, you may not get your files back and you're still at risk of future attacks. What are your other options? Well, you know, tell the security services, you know, log a, a, a report with the police. There is very little that security services and police forces can do about these types of attack. It's very, very difficult to track down the criminals because of the way they protect themselves with you know, using Tor backdoors and accepting payment via Bitcoin, which is very difficult to then track. Um, you know, so it's very, although we would, you know, most security professionals would definitely recommend opening up a, a, a case with your local police force just so they're aware of it, there is very little that security services and the police force can do to help you get your data back. The only secure way of recovering your files is by having consistent, reliable backups. That allows you to then roll back to uh, you know, your previous backups, get, re recover your data um, without actually having to pay the ransom. And so you, know, you have to consider you know, how often are you backing up? Because if you're, not, if you're only backing up once a day, then you know, potentially you're, you're gonna lose a few hours worth of data. If, if your last backup was at midnight and you've been infected by this at 10 in the morning, then you've got a few hours of, of working data you're potentially going to lose. Um, however, if you're taking backups less frequently than once a day, you're potentially looking at days worth of data you're going to lose. And this was the exact case with WannaCry. You know, the, the actual attack took place on, on Friday and Saturday last week, and a lot of users were then coming back to their workstations on Monday morning and logging on and finding out that you know, over the last few days, um, they were potentially looking at losing all of that data. Um, it's also important to consider exactly how often you are testing your backups. Um, because uh, we find a lot of organizations have a backup solution in place that they've never tried or tested, and then when they actually do suffer an attack, they come to back to try and you know, recover their data and find that actually their backups have been corrupted as well, either knocked out by the ransomware attack itself, or simply were, were never viable in the first place. So you know, our advice as a, as a vendor is obviously to have uh, re reliable, resilient backups. And over the next five or 10 minutes, we're gonna take a quick look at um, best practice in terms of protecting your environments, because that is the only surefire way of making sure that you can recover in the event of a ransomware attack like WannaCry. So that was a, a live demo of WannaCrypt um, and, what, and the WannaCry attack. Uh, so uh, as I mentioned, what is the best protection? Business continuity is the concept of taking backups and moving that one step further to providing a full suite of tools to very quickly recover data, either individual files or systems in their entirety. It provides you with disaster recovery in case something goes wrong. Because ransomware, you know, as we've seen in the last few days, isn't really a matter of if, but when. It's a bit like car crashes. You know, it's, it doesn't matter how careful of a driver you are, even if you abide by all the traffic laws, wear a seatbelt and, and drive responsibly, you can't take into account the actions of others. 
and attacks like WannaCry have shown that even if you have um, you know, educated users and uh, you know, fairly robust networks and so on, there are still potential ways for them to actually get into your systems. If you look at some of the organizations that were infected, particularly you know, organizations like maybe like Renault or, or Nissan, you know, big uh, world-class vendors, you know, they have large IT budgets. Um, and you can imagine that they probably were under the impression that they had fantastic IT security, but they were still vulnerable to these types of attack. I'm going to take you through um, a simple file recovery, but also a full system recovery, and the types of tools that are potentially uh, at your disposal in the event of a ransomware attack. This is the interface of our backup and business continuity uh, appliance. Um, and in this particular environment, you can see I'm protecting a number of systems. One of my systems is actually uh, not doing all that well at the moment because it's been infected with ransomware. This type of system allows us to capture backups very, very frequently and using the technology um, I've already described with inverse chain, it's highly efficient in the, the way that it's able to capture backups um, and storing them on the local system. I'm going to go through to the protect tab. I'm going to have a look at some of my systems and let's just uh, sort these by the last error so that we can actually take a look at one of these systems that has signs of ransomware. So this particular server um, is being backed up every 30 minutes throughout the working day. So from 8 a.m. to 6 p.m., we're capturing a backup. If I click on Manage Recovery Points, we'll actually be able to see the backup points for this particular server. And we'll be able to see exactly when a ransomware attack struck this particular system. So we can see here are our backup points for the day, every half an hour, starting at 8 a.m. throughout the day. And so the recovery point objectives for this particular server is very low because we're capturing a backup point every 30 minutes. And the ransomware detection feature in the product has, has, noti has uh, noticed that this particular backup at 2.30 p.m. Um, has signs of ransomware. So I, I'm a systems administrator. I've received this ransomware alert that one of my, my systems has potentially been infected. What am I going to do about it? Well, coming through to the restore tab of the product, I'm then able to select this system that's been infected with the ransomware. And these are the different recovery types that uh, the serious backup and business continuity solutions provides. First of all, we can do a basic file restore. And you'll notice that I'm able to select the backup points that are held on the system. And I've got a large number of backup points as part of my local backup and retention policy. And it's notifying me that this particular backup point has got signs of ransomware. If I wanted to recover my data, it's just a matter of selecting my last known good backup point. So in this instance, my 2 p.m. backup point and starting my file restore. By checking this box, I'll be able to browse through the file system of my server directly through the interface of the product, just like a kind of a, an, an FTP server. And here are all of my files ready for me to recover quickly without having to pay the ransom. So a straightforward file restore to get individual files back um, is very quick and easy to do. However, what I'm also interested in is minimizing the downtime. You know, this server that's been infected with ransomware, um, the first thing I'd probably do as a network administrator is to pull the network plugs, uh, the, the network um, from that server. So if it's a VM, disconnect it from my, my network. If it's a physical server, go and remove its ethernet cables um, to really stop it from cross-infecting any, any other systems and to make sure that I'm able to recover it. So to minimize the downtime, um, I'm able to leverage the built-in hypervisor in the, the Cirrus appliance. Again, it's notifying me that I got a backup point with ransomware. I'm going to select a, my backup point before the ransomware struck. And what we're going to do is convert this um, into a virtual machine and run that on my network to, take up, to t pick up where my infected server left off. I've hit the Start VM button. What the product is, is going to do is clone out the backup point that we've selected from the backup chain so we don't overwrite any data. It's then going to prepare that backup point's virtual machine and then power on that virtual machine. So there we go, this process normally takes us uh, six to 10 seconds. This VM is now booting up using the built-in hypervisor and the compute and memory resources provided by the, by the appliance. If I click through on this live thumbnail, it's actually opened up a console connection to this server and this server is now booting up. In a moment or two's time, it will have finished booting. I can then go and uh, access it, bring back my applications and I'm able to re recover that server in its entirety really in just a matter of minutes. And this is really what transforms a Datto Cirrus appliance from just being backup into true business continuity. Because we have the ability to very quickly recover a system both on the appliance and also in the Datto cloud, we are then able to very rapidly minimize the downtime. 
we can also use the built-in hypervisor to investigate the, the, uh, the extent of a ransomware attack. And we have a number of other tools that then allow you to completely re-image your server using a bare metal restore, or if it's a VM, to uh, take a, your last known good snapshot of that VM and pass it back over to your hypervisor to, you know, to get your, your data back into your production workload. So using these tools, you can minimize the, the effect of a ransomware attack, minimize the downtime, and get your data back quickly without paying the ransom. So uh, this uh, server is still finishing its boot process. Um, in another uh, minute or two's time, that would have finished. I'll be able to go and access it. But you can see that the, the power of this type of solution, that inverse chain technology we use to uh, build our backup chains allow us, allows us to very quickly rebuild images of servers and to then boot them on the product using our instant virtualization technology. If I come back through to my protect tab, we'll be able to see the testing of backups uh, in play. So if we uh, find my system that's been infected with ransomware and look at my recovery points, we'll be able to see how often this particular server was tested for backups. And you know, adding all of these ingredients together really shows me that, uh, or it shows that this type of solution is, is really what's required to help protect you from ransomware. So here we can see that we've got, I've got a successful screenshot verified indicator. If I actually click on this icon here, it'll show me the screenshot of this server. So here we go at 19 minutes past 12 earlier today, I tested the backup point that I've captured for that particular server, and I was successfully able to boot that server as a virtual machine. This actual screenshot itself isn't obviously of much use uh, because it's just an image of the, the server as it was, but what it represents is that you know, I've got a, a, a known backup point that I could definitely recover my data from uh, as part of this backup chain. So that is a, a quick overview of how we can potentially recover from a ransomware attack in the event of um, an, an encryption uh, attack such as WannaCry. So that was a, a live recovery demo and showing